cooked out of his skull over an Apache torture fire. And I guess most of us were thinking of him as we headed toward Fort Bowie with Lieutenant Jonathan Davenport as Merriman's replacement. Replaced by someone who believed that an officer had nothing in common with an enlisted man. Well, in his case, it was true. And maybe it was also true, as the lieutenant stated, that the Indians hadn't launched a major offensive for some time. But if the Apaches weren't actually at war for the moment, I knew they weren't ever at peace. Not that my sergeant stripes entitled me to an opinion in Lieutenant Davenport's estimation. But so far as he was concerned, the Indians weren't on the warpath. There was no need for a rear guard. And it was degrading to have been assigned to a routine patrol. He hadn't been around long enough to learn that nothing was ever routine along the Tomahawk Trail. Every man jack of us knew that Lieutenant Davenport had cost us a number of lives. Our supply and ammunition wagons, all but a couple of our pack animals. But when we made bivouac the next night, he was still full of confidence and orders. Our camp was laid out in accordance with a chapter he'd read in Napoleonic campaigns. every last one of you pulling extra duty for the loss of these horses. What do I have here, a cavalry patrol or an old lady's sewing circle? Sir? Who are you? Private Tim Reynolds, sir. I thought I could explain about... In my outfit, privates don't explain. That's up to the sergeant. Sergeant McCoy! Yes, sir. Suppose you tell us, sergeant, who's responsible for the loss of our mounts. You, sir. Just what do you mean by that, sergeant? The lieutenant may remember I told him that in Apache country it isn't usual to tie the horses up away from the men. He may also remember he said he didn't like the horses disturbing his sleep. Never mind the explanation, Sergeant. Tell the men to fall in. We're going on to Fort Bowie. On foot, sir? Yes, Sergeant, on foot. The lieutenant's new to this part of the country, so perhaps he doesn't know the Apache are on the warpath. They'll be stalking us every step of the way. You heard my orders, McCoy. Sir, I'd just like to say I know the Apache. They must have had a reason for stealing our horses. They know where routine patrols like ours are headed. Maybe they're planning to hit Fort Bowie. It's true, this is my first mission against Apaches. 
And it's true, this is my first mission with this outfit. But it's also true, McCoy, that I'm the lieutenant and you're an enlisted man. Now, you heard my orders. Any questions? No, sir. You know the Apache, Sarge. Only way you'll find them is when you smell them. I'll pick up some of their cooties. You know, I've been in the Army for four years, and I've never been this lousy before. Well, that's what patrol in Apache country will do to you. When we reach Fort Bowie tonight, I may give you permission to take a bath. Thanks. You don't think we're going to reach Bowie tonight, do you, Sarge? What do you mean, I don't think? Well, Bowie's northeast of here. Ever since we lost our horses, the West Point one has been marching us due north. So? So I think the sun's gone to Lieutenant Davenport's head. Even a West Point graduate can't be that stupid. Well, it's a lucky thing I didn't hear you say that, Private Reynolds. As first sergeant, I'd have to report you to our lieutenant. <laughs> you know how he likes to follow the book. Keep your eyes peeled. Cavalry. He makes us infantry. I hope the Apaches get his rotten scalp before he runs out of cigars. You've been in the army long enough to know his kind always die in bed. Man, scout reports no sign of Apaches anywhere, sir. Good. Proceed as ordered. Sir? Yes, Sergeant. You still want to march us due north? Are you questioning my judgment, Sergeant? No, sir. Order the scout to rejoin the platoon. We don't need an advance scout. I didn't say there were no Apaches, sir. I said the scout was unable to see any. I think you're yellow, McCoy. I think you're afraid that there's an Apache brave behind every mesquite bush and boulder in this forsaken place. How long you been in the Army? Two hitches, sir. Four years, 11 months, and 28 days. I've got it figured out in minutes, too, Lieutenant, if you'd like to hear. I've got nine years behind me, Sergeant. Four years at West Point and five years fighting the Sioux. I know how to fight Indians. Apaches are different from Sioux, sir. And the Mescaleras are the worst Apaches there are. This country's different, too, Lieutenant. Even the sun's different here in the desert, sir. Are you all right, sir? As you were, Sergeant. Tell the men to fall in and resume march. Yes, sir. Fall in. March. Lieutenant Davenport, sir. Are you sure you're all right? Yes. Only... In my eyes, I feel like they're being stabbed by daggers. This is your first patrol in this part of the country, sir. It's been a murderous one. We've lost our horses. The Apaches on the warpath, cutting our trail every day or so. I'm all right, Sergeant. How about taking it easy for a while, sir? 
Are you suggesting I'm not fit to command? I didn't say that, sir. It's just... Well, I'd like to give the men a ten-minute break, Lieutenant. All right. All right, Sergeant, ten minutes. All out. Got you, my little darling. Oh, back to the Indians. All right, keep it quiet. That's rifle fire. Hey, I hear it all right. Crossfire. With Apache attack in broad daylight like this, Serge? Well, that Chief Victoria was as smart as they come. If he had something to gain, he sure would. That's from Bowie, sir, under attack. Don't instruct me in tactics, Sergeant. I know gunfire when I hear it. That's not from Fort Bowie, it's from the east. I beg your pardon, Lieutenant, but you've been marching us due north, remember? That's from the fort, all right. I'll have your stripes for this, Sergeant. Why the devil didn't you tell me? Sergeants aren't supposed to question the judgments of their lieutenants, sir. Order the men to proceed to the fort. Double time. Sergeant, do I understand you've instructed the sentries not to shoot if they spot an Indian? Yes, sir. Why? We'd be asking for trouble, sir. Without horses, we're not strong enough to fight back. Well, I've countermanded those orders, Sergeant. I've told the men to shoot on sight. Lieutenant... As you were, Sergeant! Now tell the men to fall in and double time to the fort. Bully! March! any faster it's rough terrain sir on the animals as well as the men i don't intend being held up by any jackasses i'll show you how to move an animal sergeant No use, Lieutenant. We'd be all day trying to catch him. Scout that bridge.
expect from an Apache squaw. Where'd you come from, a mission school? I'm not an Apache, Sergeant. My name is Ellen Carter. Are you all right, Tula? Carter? Wasn't that the name of the captain in command of Fort Defiance during that raid two months ago? My father. I was visiting from back east. There were no survivors at Defiance. There was one. They took me as a hostage. And I owe my life to this girl. Well, you're lucky. Maybe you don't know what they usually do to our women. But death is a lot better. Blue coat devil! <laughs> usually they don't come with so much spirit. She's the chief's daughter. Victoria? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that makes her a very valuable prisoner. I told you she's my friend. She's not to be treated like a prisoner. I get tighter, you idiot. You want me to bleed to death? Sorry, Lieutenant, I'll, I'll make it tidy for you, sir. All right, all right. I was just going to return it to the Lieutenant. Well, what do you know? Real women. Lay off, understand? Looks like it ain't going to be too bad after all. Huh? This turned up, sir. Uh, also an interesting prisoner. Oh, her name's Carter. Her father was in command at Defiance two months before you got here. Are you trying to tell me she's one of us, Sergeant? Look at her. She's a squaw. Don't let the get up fool you, sir. She was their prisoner. It's a trick. An Apache trick. Now, wait a minute, sir. Her father was... I want these Apache women bound. They're our prisoners, and I want them tied like prisoners. Listen, sir, I don't think you understand me. I'll try and explain again. This is Ellen Carter. This is the Indian girl. She can be valuable to us. Oh, then you admit that she's an Apache. Sorry, sir, to contradict you. I'm giving the orders, McCoy! Now I want these Apache women tied! Tie them up! No, sir, I can't. You ought to know what the regulations say, sir. Only women carrying concealed weapons can be considered combatants. Are you refusing to obey my direct orders, McCoy? Yes, sir, I have to. I'll have you court-martialed for this. I'll send you up to Leavenworth so long that you'll rot there. This man is under arrest! Dispose of those prisoners. And the rest of you men, stand by for further orders. As you were! <laughs> Lieutenant Davenport, under the regulations of the United States Army, you're forcing me to take over command, sir. Why, you filthy... <gasps> All right, McCoy. For assaulting an officer, for refusal to obey a direct order, I'm gonna have you before a firing squad. Perhaps, sir. But you're not well. I've seen what the sun's been doing to you. It's been a long, hard march. You've got a bad head wound. I don't think I'd be doing my duty, sir, if I didn't take over. Arrest this man! Miller! You heard me! Arrest him! All right, if you get to be giving orders. The lieutenant's a casualty. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's still a lieutenant, isn't he? And you're only a sergeant. That's right, and I'm taking over as of now. Take care of him. You... Arrest this man! You... Miller, stay with him. He's not well. Order the men to fall in. We'll move out at once. You know what you're doing? You know I'm for you, Mac, but if you're wrong... Have you thought about that? Tim, I haven't had time to think. Things have been moving too fast since we started out in this patrol. All right, you men, fall in!
One cry from her and we'll be meat for the buzzards. She won't utter a sound. I promise. If you look cross-eyed at those girls, I'll tear you apart. They're moving away. Escaleras can hear a butterfly ten miles away. Let's bed down on those trees over there. You're really taking over, huh? Uh, looks like it, doesn't it? You know, West Point will have you a scout for this. And I got nothing to lose, have I? Give word I know make sound. I give promise. You can turn in now. He won't touch you again. I give promise. You dog. You stupid, filthy dog. Attacking that girl. She ain't no girl. She's Apache, ain't she? I'm going to teach you a lesson before we're through, Barrow. Oh, no. no, the only teaching you're going to do is in the guardhouse. I don't aim to be there. you for what you did. You could thank her. She could have screamed. I guess I was wrong about her. I guess you've been wrong about other things before. Maybe now you know there's such a thing as a good Apache. My kind's often wrong, Miss Carter. That's the secret of my failure. Your failure? Well, we all owe our lives to you. You deserve a medal for what you're doing. Well, thanks. But I don't think they let you wear medals in an army prison. I don't like it. Why? The way they're palavering. They're Apache, ain't they? Maybe there's such a thing as a good Apache. What, the sun gone to your head, too? You always told us there ain't no such animal as a good Apache. I guess I was wrong about that, too. Order the men to fall in. Take care of her. Fall in!
In our two skirmishes with the Apaches, Lieutenant Davenport had displayed bravery, if not wisdom. And he showed the same sort of dogged courage on the grueling overland trek. He was obviously weak and unsteady on his feet. But he never complained nor asked for any special treatment. What's more, although he spoke seldom to anyone aside from his orderly, he seemed completely rational. At times, I even thought that maybe the sun had gotten me for a while, that I'd imagined his conduct had justified my taking over. But even if I'd been right, Davenport was back in line now, and I figured he could very easily persuade the CO at Bowie that I'd committed the worst of all military crimes. We were getting closer to Bowie, and I began to think I'd be enjoying my first meal there in the guardhouse. At least I wouldn't be in the stockade at Bowie very long. The odds were that Davenport wouldn't have any trouble at all making good his threat to ship me to Leavenworth. No sign of life. No sentry in the tower. Something's wrong. What are you waiting for, you fool? Take me to the commanding officer. That's an order, McCoy! Keep a sharp lookout. Can't all be dead. Lieutenant Davenport reporting, sir. I want that sergeant put under arrest for assaulting an officer, for direct disobedience of orders, for mutiny, for rankings. Responsible for this. Save it for the court martial. Make him comfortable. Sergeant, you took over. Yeah, you tell us. What's next? We don't have enough men to defend this fort. We've got to go on to Benson. Oh, we're almost dead now. We'll be more dead if we stay here. We'll never make it. Look at us. What do you think will happen when Victorio gets back and finds his daughter's been kidnapped? Okay. Check the water supplies. Figure three days to reach Benson. You, Barrow, muster all canteens. All right. Miller! See if you can find a stretcher. If you can't, make one. We'll have to carry the lieutenant. Sergeant, what about Tula? She'll have to come along. Maybe you don't remember what she's done for me. We need her for protection. Protection? Why? Why can't you let her go? She might be our only chance to stay alive, Miss Carter. Please, Sergeant, you don't realize... Excuse you're... me, miss. We've got things to do. Keep an eye on him, Johnny. Yes, Sergeant. Let's check the barracks. You know what he's planning to do. He is a warrior in a blue coat. My father has said that a warrior must often do what he's not here to do. He refuses to let you return to your people. He's planning to use you to save the lives of his men. Even an Apache squaw knows that.
my way, Apache. I've been dreaming of this for days. It salted. The stinking redskins ruined the water. Are you crazy, soldier? <laughs> Haven't you been in the army long enough to know they might do this? <clears throat> I tell him, Sergeant. <clears throat> make a check of what water we've got left in our canteens. Hey, Mac, you're not planning to make Benson with the water we brought here, are you? We haven't any choice, Tim. Look, Sergeant, why are we going to leave here? Yeah, let's stay here. Another patrol be heading this way. Sure, in six or seven days. Don't you think Victoria knows that? Then what are we going to do? Well, first, let's take a breather. Miller, how's the lieutenant? He don't make sense. It's all your fault. If it hadn't been for you... Look, he was inexperienced against Apaches. The sun got to him and he got a bad head wound. I'm doing the best I can for him and the patrol. That's your story. What right have you got to take over from a West Point graduate? You know, this is going to be an interesting court-martial. What do you want me to do, bust out crying because he's oddly scared? Okay, you give the orders. What next? Check the ammo dump. I'm sure they didn't leave anything, but they may have missed a sub vault. Have a look, will you? Right. Hey, uh, Mac, I was just wondering, if I salute you, do they get me up for a court-martial, too? Come here. I said, come here. Your boudoir, ladies. You'll be safe in there. Uh, sorry if I've been rough on you. I understand. Thanks. I guess you're tired of playing engine, Miss Carter. Here, these might fit. You'll want to wash off some of that desert ground, I guess. I'll send somebody over with the CO's bathtub. Water's salty, but uh, it's all right for bathing. What luck? You know, they must have got away with 30,000 rounds. And rifles? Not a one left. Well, that figures. There is 2,000 rounds of 45 70s in the sub vault. Oh, good. At least we'll be able to send a few of them back to join their ancestors. That's what the Apache wants, isn't it, Sergeant? To die in battle? They can't lose, can they? Nope. After that first mad scene Lieutenant Davenport had staged with Bowie's dead CO, he started acting normal again. Or maybe it wasn't normal for him. He was downright friendly when I looked in on him, and he just seemed like any man recovering from a bad sickness. Oh, I'd heard that crazy men develop a cunning that can fool experts. But I wasn't an expert anyway. And the habit of respecting a man's rank is pretty deep in a soldier. I almost forgot he'd acted like a madman. And I actually began to report to him as though I hadn't grabbed the reins. As though I still viewed him as my superior officer. The other way, pal. I said, the other way. Well, how do you think I feel? Gave the sergeant my word I wouldn't look in. You can turn around now, soldier. Would you get us another couple of buckets of water? They're out there, all right. Don't ever forget it. The Apache never shows himself, but he's always there, thinking. Think of me what you're going to do. And he's hardly ever wrong. Water carrier for women. The things I do for the United States Army. When they find out we're here, they'll try and take all our scalps. You can be sure of that. Better than dying in a stinking desert. Johnny, what do you think? Apache half saying. Death comes anyway. Why go to meet him? All right, we stay. There's fresh ammo in the sub vault. I want the fort secured and get that gate fixed. All right, everybody, turn to. 
Hey, Sergeant. I was wondering. You uh, kept your word, didn't you? About looking in? Sure. No, but I was wondering, if she can bathe in this water, uh, just wash my shirt and it ain't gonna kill these cooties. Maybe if I drank a little of this stuff, it might discourage the critters. Take the ladies the water. Sun and touch earth. I see fire. You do? What's it mean, Johnny? Can be war dance. I get it. Thanks, Johnny. The Apaches have lit a fire. Probably getting drunk on Tisbin right now. Attack in the morning. You think so? Well, I'll know better if I hear their drums. So, what do we do? Well, they probably got scouts out. I want them killed without a sound. But you want us to wait until they're looking down our throats? That's right. Just knives. Pass the word along. Okay, Sergeant. Sir. what soap and water can do. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's just that you look like a new person. Perhaps I am, Sergeant. You know, a few months ago, I was Ellen Carter of Philadelphia. Could that girl ever imagine she'd be in the middle of the desert? Not sure whether she was going to live or die. Sergeant, I'm afraid. Don't be afraid, Ellen. You know what? What? I have a hunch. You know, I never met anybody like you. Uh, what's that? More than likely, Apache birds. Probably a couple of brave scoutiness. They talk to each other like that. You really hate them, don't you? Don't you, after what they did to your father? You? I've had a lot of time to think, Sergeant. Maybe they hate us because we hate them. Can we blame them for wanting to kill us? I leave that kind of thinking to preachers. Where's it all to end? All this hate, all this bitterness. Maybe you better ask them. When? When we've killed them all off or they've killed us off? You got any better ideas? Yes. We should stop hating and killing each other. Ellen, sometimes life gives you no choice. Sometimes you've got to either kill or be killed. It's as simple as that. I'm afraid that's where you and I differ. Okay, that's where we differ. What do you think, Johnny? You have heard those drums before, Sergeant. They speak to you, son. They promised the great father many enemy dead. And we'll probably be the ones to oblige them. You know what they'll do to you, Johnny, if they capture you. They not capture me, Sergeant. American soldiers know how to die, too. Get rid of him.
You had to kill him, understand? Did I? Ellen, he was your enemy. You had no choice. What you did was right. Now listen, anybody in this compound would have done the same thing. He was dead the minute he laid hands on you. Now, please tell me you understand that. I understand. Tula, you know that call? It is a signal my father taught me when I am lost. Someone looks for me. Thanks. You had both better stay in here. Sergeant. Wade. Wade. I don't know whether I was right or wrong. But please take care of yourself. Tula. Yes, my sister. We must stop them. What must be, must be. Oh, you can't believe that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have saved me when I was a prisoner among your people. War is different. This isn't war, Tula. This is murder. Cold-blooded murder. There's so many of you. But so few of us. And what of all the times when there were so many blue coats? And so few of our people? You are angry with me. You speak a strange tongue for someone who calls me sister. Does my sister wish to know why I told the big warrior that my father sent braves to find me? I thought you'd become our friend. I am your friend only. I could see the big warrior loves my sister. Does she return the love? Well, that's not the point, Tula. Why should all the men die? Warriors are not afraid to die. Yes, but why needlessly? If we could stop your father now, before there's more killing, maybe it could do some good. The hate between our people is too deep. Oh, listen to me, Tula. Somehow there's got to be a start, no matter how small. Why not here, now? It's the only way there can ever be peace. Peace will only come when my people are free to live on the land. And so you're going to do nothing about it? You're going to let all the men die? Tula, when you call me sister, do you speak true? Chief's daughter always speak true. I love the tall warrior. I do not want him to die. Can my sister understand what is in my heart? Drums, what do they mean? Uh, they know we're here, I guess. You think they're getting ready to attack? Who knows? Maybe they think we're a fresh platoon here from Benson in force. They'll come closer before do anything, build a big fire, drink a lot of tism. They've got nothing to be afraid of. We're all locked up for them. Barrow? Yeah? See anything? Not a thing. Hey, Mac, why can't we get word to this here chief of theirs? Tell him we've got his daughter. I'm sure he knows we've got his daughter. Well, let's make a deal with him. It's our only hope, Mac. Did anybody ever tell you you were too smart to be a private? Yeah. All right, Ulysses Simpson Grant, cover all the checkpoints for me, will you? Right.
Thanks for disobeying orders. How about that Indian girl? I had to do something to make it up. You did plenty. They'll probably miss these fellows in a while and start looking. The men will need all the sleep they can get. See, they spell each other, huh? All right. I thought you'd like to know. Uh, I gotta be stuck out here. I'm sure glad you're my sergeant. Save it for the court, Marshal. All right, bring it over here. If they break through that gate, open fire. How strong are they? Don't rightly know, Sergeant. Well, if they give you an idea, let me know. They won't. Thirty Apaches. As had become my custom, I hurried to Lieutenant Davenport's quarters, actually looking forward to any friendly suggestions he might make. So, oh, the mutinous sergeant favors us with a visit. Sir, I... Miller, just to keep the record straight for the court-martial proceedings, how do I strike you? Reasonable, of sound mind. Yes, sir. All right. Repeat what this man said to you. He, he said you, did, you didn't have much experience with the Apaches, sir, that you got sunstroke and a bad head wound, so you didn't know what you were doing. You got a good memory, Miller. Did you tell him I did what I had to for the patrol? Save it for the Board of Inquiry, McCoy. All right, Miller, that's all. Get out. I'll show you who's fit to command. I'm taking you over as of now. You understand, McCoy? My sword. The cavalry officer's got to have a sword. Lieutenant, you can't go out there, sir. The desert's crawling with mescaleras. Take your hands off me, McCoy, and get out of my way. Bugler! Bugler, sound assembly! Everybody, mount up! We're cavalry, we're not gonna die like rats! That's an order! Here they come! You wanna make that court martial? Get him inside and keep him there.
Helen, are you all right? Yes. Good. Johnny, I want to make a deal with Trua's father. I talked to her about it, Wade. She doesn't want to go. I think both not understand music the drums speak now. Say there is death in Victorio's clan. Which means what? Braves tell Chief Tula surrender. Now we take. This way, Chief not angry at them. But daughter is. She knows to her father she's already dead. You want to trade lives for her? I not think Victoria want daughter anymore. The way I see it, they'll wait for us to make the next move. I'm going out to see Victorio. Ulysses, take over. Now, wait a minute, Sarge. Why don't you ask for volunteers? Victorio's a chief. He's going to want to talk to a chief. Looks like that's me. The sergeant's supposed to ask for volunteers. If we're going to have to fight the Indians again, it seems to me we could send somebody else out to palaver with them. Not you. Tula, I must go to see my father. No, Tula. His warriors have told him you deserted to us. Not that we captured you. Still, I must try to speak to him. I can't let you go, Tula. He'd only kill you. But my sister has said that he would do this to the Blue Coats. At least a soldier with a white flag has a chance. Promise you'll stay. Promise? I wouldn't ask any man to do something I'm not anxious to do myself. You're needed here at the fort. Let me go. Now, save your breath. I'm going. If we got to fight again, we'd be dead without the sergeant here. Me, uh, I'm what the Army calls, uh, expendable. I'm still sergeant, and I'll give the orders. I'm going to see Victorio. Sergeant! Sergeant! There goes Tua! After he kills her, they'll start another attack. No, wait a minute, Sarge. Look! They're going away! It's not all over for him yet. There'll be a board of inquiry, you know. And he'll need all the help he can get. Tell him for me that I'll be on his side. Thanks, Miller. Where'd you say you were from? Boston? New York? Philadelphia. Oh. You know something? I'm not letting you go anywhere. Those big towns. They're not safe for a girl alone. Oh. <laughs> 